My name is uh, Philip Hans Francis. Uh, I'm a professor of applied econometrics and also professor of marketing research. And currently I serve as the dean of the Erasmus School of Economics. I was a moderately uh, good student, uh, certainly in the first few years. Later on, when I, the topics became more interesting, really the kind of econometrics that I like. Uh, I had some higher grades, but on average it was something like a seven. Um, but I was very active in the school union, in, in organizing trips, in uh, compiling the school magazine, uh, those kind of things. I was even the DJ for a while. Um, all kinds of other activities, basically. But, you know, Groningen is a very pleasant city to hang around as a student, so I enjoyed it very much. Hobbies. Yes, well, the best answer would be it's my work, but I'm not sure that everybody either believes it or understands it. Um, but work is really what I like doing. It's, uh, it's not difficult and it gives me much pleasure. I do play some tennis with friends and, and I used to box, by the way, but that was when I was a little younger. Um, um, I like to go with my youngest son to the beach. He's doing kite surfing. And I just like to see it because it's a, a very an energetic kind of uh, activity. I still was publishing uh, articles. I must admit, not exactly at the high level that I used to have before. I'm very happy with the work that I did with uh, Francine Gesnicht on um, the forecasting of uh, crisis, where we used models from earthquake literature to see if those kind of models can be useful to predict uh, upcoming financial crisis, and it was, it was successful. Along the lines, I also was able to write a book. Uh, it's called Enjoyable Econometrics. It just came out with uh, Cambridge this summer. And um, it is a bit of a new way of looking at our discipline. Not so much starting with complicated mathematics and models, but more with the research question and um, the data that you can collect. So that made me think, why do we have one, two, five, 10, 20, 50 for the euro? And what we had for the Gilder, one, two and a half, five, 10. And so is there any optimal range? Is it, why do we choose for this? And that's what, well, that started the whole line of research. I think we, we, together with PhD students as well, we wrote something like 10 articles on this. I was also a student who wrote a PhD thesis on this topic. So first it was thinking about why is this, uh, is the choice made for one to five? And then later on we came into the area. So what do people actually do if they open up their wallet and decide to pay something? We developed uh, a little experiment using a monopoly game, the Euro, the Euro monopoly game, I think it's called, where we had people play the game. And so we could see what they do if they had to make a transaction, what they kept in their wallet because it's on the table. So then you can see what people actually do if they have to make a choice. And then we did all kinds of experiments where we re removed one of the notes to see what people do if, they, if there is one missing. The Euro Monopoly game doesn't have a 200 Euro note. So we had those notes uh, actually created artificially so that we have a full range of notes that we also have in actual practice. So we created fake Monopoly notes. So the book is, uh, is, is about all kinds of examples and illustrations that are not necessarily economic, but can handle, can deal with any kind of things, with, with how to deal with cash money, how to, um, if, if, if temperatures are on the rise, is it always happening in, throughout the year, or is it only winters that are getting warmer? Those kind of questions. Very simple, understandable questions, where I show that you could use uh, econometric techniques for that. Nowadays, you see that students are much more dedicated. They are exceptionally good here in Rotterdam. We have our double bachelor program where the, well, the smartest students around are, are there. They're very quick in programming, much quicker than I am. And it's very nice to be surrounded by people who are smarter than you. And, and if you can work together with them, undergraduate students, but also PhD students, that is very, very pleasant. When we try to hire them, you, you must know there is something like a bit of a market for that. So every year, there are uh, people who have done their PhD or almost done. They are on the job market, as we call it. And then they can apply for positions that we have here. When they do, some of us go to the United States or other countries where the large conferences are. And there they meet for the first time to see if there's a click. Then these junior people come to get a seminar here. And if everything goes well, they get a job offer. 
And that sometimes is with one a year, sometimes it's with 10 or 12 a year. So typically people say, I come here because of the others who are, are already here. What I'm sure of is that whatever we predict will be the same in 10 years, that will be wrong. So there will be no Facebook in 10 years from now. It will, be, it will have disappeared, it will be something else. Those things change, so universal laws we typically do not look for because we, I don't think that we really believe that they exist. But it's nice to have, say, shorter run predictions and scenarios and evaluations that help people to make better choices. Yeah, a life motto, that is intriguing because I never thought about that. Um, so you have to find somewhere a text that you think, yes, that could have been mine. It's a quote by uh, Francis Bacon, the painter. Um, I like his work very, very much uh, as a British uh, well-known uh, artist. And he has a quote, and I have to read it because it's a very nice one in English. I can't remember it by heart. It says, to find your true path, you must be as free as possible to cast adrift. And I thought that was very nice.